Let's begin. Burn, ungodly filth! What do you want? To make you powerless or to make you despair? Spirit Blade Productions presents... Do you have any idea how much I will make you suffer? The horrific agony that I will inflict. Spirit Blade. Dark Ritual. Hell will be a refuge for you when I'm finished. For more information, visit spiritblade.com. Well, my editing skills are crap, but can the same thing be said about upgrade? No freaking way, dude. Stick around and find out why. There is no song I can think of that describes how I feel and what this movie's like. Mm. Hi, I'm Peter Franzen from ChristianGeekCentral.com and Spirit Blade Productions, here with my uncut review of... Upgrade. Oh, 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 man. The synopsis on IMDb reads, Set in the near future, technology controls nearly all aspects of life. But when Gray, a self-identified technophobe, has his world turned upside down, his only hope for revenge is an experimental computer chip implant called STEM. Now, what the trailer will also tell you, this is, I don't think these are spoilers, you just see this in the trailer uh, for the movie, which I recommend that you check out. Uh, the trailer will also tell you that Gray is paralyzed early in the movie and the AI controlled computer chip STEM enables him to walk, do kung fu, and all kinds of crazy crap to help him hunt down the people who killed his wife. All that happens at the very beginning uh, of, of the movie. I loved this movie. Oh my gosh. Um, let me talk about the, the story, the script, the pacing, the tone, just kind of what this animal is. There's some things I definitely am just not going to say. Um, the, the trailer does not present, in a nutshell, what the experience will be. I watched the trailer and I was like, oh, this totally looks like my kind of movie. It looks like it's going to have brutal action and definitely some superhero vibes and some fish-out-of-water humor. I'm in. Um, and it does. It has all those things. But what I love about this trailer is that it doesn't tell... There's so much it doesn't tell you about what kind of movie this is, where, what direction this movie goes. Um, I mean, you, you, you take the genres of superhero and then some horror and then some revenge, revenge flick and then science fiction and you just throw them in a blender and then toss your expectations out the window. I mean, wow. I, I love it when a movie can surprise me in a, in a way that is delightful to me. Uh, it definitely has tons of action, but also slows down for some weighty human drama, especially near the beginning as Gray is dealing with his paralysis. They're, I mean, they, they go to some kind of heavy places and, and I think probably just take a few basic snapshots of, of what I, I can imagine a person with paralysis is uh, suffering with and, and having to adapt to and stuff. You know, there, there are so many movies like this where if they paralyzed a character and then brought in some kind of like cybernetic thing to restore him and it has lots of superhero action, they would gloss over some of just kind of like the private dark realities of, of uh, dealing with uh, with permanent paralysis, you know, but I felt like this movie at least attempted to touch on some of those things, and it did it in a way that made me feel pity and compassion for this character. I love it when a movie, even if it's going to be, you know, fun and funny and action-y and stuff like that, can also take me to those heavy moments because that makes me feel the action so much more later on when the character is, you know, able to strike back at the people that wronged him so much. It's those dark values that make the victory moment so much more powerful for me and I wish so much that more movies would allow for those dark moments so that I could have a reason to stand and cheer you know uh, instead of just seeing a bunch of eye candy yeah well of course he's the super guy he's gonna do the kung fu and then the mustache twirling bad guy is gonna be hauled off to prison you know uh, I, I, I like to feel something when these uh, when in, in all these kinds of stories where it's good versus evil and all the complexities in between. Anyway, 
There's lots of darkly funny moments and fish out of water humor that come out of uh, STEM. Remember, that's the AI uh, computer system. Uh, STEM's brutal efficiency at, at killing. And Gray, while he's doing all this kung fu, has this shocked, horrified look on his eyes at what his own body is doing. It's great. You can see some of that in the trailer. Um, there are satisfying moments when Gray is empowered by STEM, too, that give off those kind of superhero vibes. There's also suspense throughout, which was great because Gray still has this vulnerable human body um, that is often at risk, despite his newfound offensive powers that can, in you know, bursts make him seem like he's just totally unstoppable. So it's really cool when you have a character that can be so powerful and unstoppable and yet very vulnerable at the same time it keeps the intensity in uh, in all those action sequences this is a dark future where body modification through cybernetics is commonplace um and a, a, a technophobe like gray is like the rare exception almost everybody else has some kind of technology in their body doing stuff you know um and so and human integration with technology in general is pervasive you know you think about like uh alexa you know the uh, the little, just the beginnings of these AI interfaces that we can have in our homes. Um, and, you know, we can say, Alexa, turn on this, or Alexa, do that, or whatever, or Xbox, do this, blah, blah, you know. So it's it's all of that kind of stuff, but taken much, much further. So there are these artificial AI systems that people are interacting with all the time that are driving their cars, that are making their dinners, you know, all this kinds of stuff. Um, the, there are some cerebral th and thought-provoking themes about our connection to technology and the downfalls that that could lead to really appreciated that especially in a movie that has so much action and stuff to also have some of those kind of like uh thoughtful themes is really appreciated by me it's been a long time since i've seen a movie with a script that incorporated so many diverse elements that i personally love and the things i love most about this movie i don't even dare hint at you know um so if the trailer looks enjoyable to you i think you'll enjoy this movie unless you want just a straightforward story that won't go in unexpected directions that maybe even change the feel of the movie as a whole itself um i, I cannot categorize this film and I love it for that. All right, let's talk about the cast just briefly. And really, I just want to talk about Logan Marshall Green. He plays uh, the main character, Gray. He's known to me as the first guy who died horribly in the movie Prometheus. He also plays Shocker in uh, the recent Spider-Man Homecoming movie. Um, this movie really hangs on his performance, you know, and he really pulled it off for me. His body movements, while aided by STEM, always have this sort of smooth, artificial feel to them. Um, and he's also emotionally vulnerable um, in, in his moments of weakness and sadness. Uh, he's darkly cocky when he's empowered at times. So it's this great, really, this range in his performance, um, both emotionally and what he's doing with his body physically. Um, and, and I really wouldn't be surprised if this movie led to him becoming a big leading man in Hollywood going forward. I don't think it's launching with a really wide release. I think it's get, having a somewhat limited release um, right now but uh, it, it, my hope is that it will catch on and then get a much wider release and and uh, I'll get to see more of this performer in in other movies because I think uh, I'm really enjoying what I'm seeing of him in uh, Prometheus specifically and then uh, also in this movie the rest of the cast in uh, upgrade is all solid to me and felt like good fits for their roles I'm not going to comment further on that uh, let's talk about the stunts and the visuals um, the fight scenes in this movie were both brutal and artful to me, which is kind of an interesting <laughs> combination. Stem's fighting style when uh, he, it takes over reminds me a bit of the dance-like fight choreography of the Matrix, but the effects that his uh, kung fu or whatever have on his enemies are far more impactful and brutal and nasty, you know. The camera also does some cool locking on to Grey um, when he's fighting in STEM mode that has kind of like the chaos of the, of the, uh, the of a shaky cam, but while still being locked onto the action. It's a bit like, I don't know if this is how they accomplished it, but it's a bit like some of those movies where they will actually attach the camera to the actor. Um, in, well, they couldn't have done that in a bunch of these scenes, but, you know, when they have a big harness, a big 
big rig that the actor's wearing, and the camera is just, you know, therefore they're wearing it. It's just extended out, you know, like maybe six feet, four feet from them, and it's just kind of locked on to their movements so that basically they appear to be still in the shot while the entire world moves around them. So it was a similar kind of effect going on with the camera, which just followed him as he would kind of flip around and stuff like that, and then sometimes break away, and so that he would start moving again, and it, it's hard to describe. You you will see some of it in the trailer if you check it out, so it'll give you an idea of what I'm talking about, but but that they, they really use that effect uh, well throughout the entire movie. I really enjoyed it. Um, it. It has some of the chaos and excitement of like a shaky cam, but it's still locked onto the action. You know, one of my pet peeves of the shaky cam is I can't tell what the crap is going on, and that's not the case in this movie. It has that kind of chaos feel of the shaky cam, but it is locked onto the action, and so you're able to to really appreciate what's happening. Um, there's also a bunch of incidental CGI that fleshes out this sci-fi world, and it all felt suited to purpose, so even though I have an eye that's cursed to pick out CGI, uh, it, it didn't bother me in this movie. Um, the way the camera is used, let me just say that again, as especially in the fight scenes, but also throughout the movie. It has a particular style to it that was cool for me to watch um, without just being artful shot composition. You know, sometimes there can be action shots, especially if they incorporate slow motion, which slow motion isn't a thing in this movie. Um, but, you know, there'll, there'll be these action shots that are so beautifully composed that they're just kind of like cool to look at and they can even kind of take you out of the suspense and the action of the moment. They're just eye candy. But I felt like the style of this movie had some of the best parts of eye candy, but it's now eye candy with impact. So really kind of uh, entrancing to watch while still keeping me on the edge of my seat. Um, okay, so is there anything of worthwhile moral, philosophical, or spiritual significance going on in the themes of this story that might trigger worthwhile thought or conversation? I always like to try and consider whether or not that's going on in any kind of fiction that I take in. Um, un this, this is an AI story. It deals with AI a lot. Uh, it deals with technology a lot. Um, unlike many AI stories that ask us to care about artificial beings and think of them as humans um, and assign worth to them uh, the same way that we, we would assign worth to the human characters in the story, this movie retains a coldness, a, a detachment in the nature of the AI character Stem, even though he has this sort of unintended charm and likability that grows out of that very same detachment attached coldness on his part because he's not human he doesn't you know he doesn't think about kind of the moral issues the moral dilemmas and stuff that uh, uh, that gray is is feeling conflicted about you know and so some of the humor comes out of that um, this is a movie that presents AI as something that can be fun and cute to interact with um, for the ways that it kind of mimics personhood but you know kind of off kilter but at the end of the day it also affirms that AIs are not people. They are not people at all and should not be thought of as people. Um, that, uh, that it's important for us to see through that little trick, that little joke we're playing on ourselves when we interact with uh, an AI um, or, a, or a simulated in, simulation of a human or something, human personality. Um, that, you know, even as we're enjoying uh, kind of tricking ourselves as we interact with those things, we're, at the end of the day, we should, we, we should see them as uh, artificial, as not persons. Um, while humanizing AI in fiction and giving it uh, the same value as uh, human personhood, um, while doing that, uh, is consistent with naturalistic or atheistic thinking, which would just say that basically, hey, all we are is kind of machines too, so what makes us any more special or different from, you know, this artificial intelligence that we would create? You know, that that's going to be more consistent with a, a naturalistic or atheistic worldview. Um, but if anything, this movie... Um, hints at being pro-theistic. One element of this dark future is a thorough secularization of society. It was evidenced in a scene by the novelty this character sees and the fact that uh, old paper money, you know, like when she sees it, she hadn't seen paper money ever before in her life. Uh, and she looked at it and she's like, Oh, really does have God on it, you know? Uh, and so that was a novelty to her. Uh, and the police detective that's helping out Gray, who uh, is throughout the movie presented as this um, 
sympathetic, caring, and helpful character. Uh, it's uh, it's not too subtly, uh, subtly shown that she's wearing a cross around her neck. So uh, I don't think those are accidents. I think that those are uh, costume choices and a dialogue, you know, brief dialogue moment that are in there on purpose, as well as some of the cautionary elements regarding technology um, that this movie presents. You know, so um, virtual reality also comes up as some people in this world choose to spend every waking moment in a fantasy world. And the reason given for that was that a fake world is a lot less painful than the real world. Um, now, I mean, we can be sympathetic toward that. I mean, sometimes we can make the mistake, really, of escaping to entertainment instead of really dealing with and processing through our problems, you know, dealing with them through the truth of Scripture or, or through time spent with God or through talking to people that can help us out. You know, sometimes we can find it easier to just, oh, I'm just going to escape to entertainment, you know. And under a naturalistic worldview, there's nothing objectively wrong or wasteful about a person choosing to spend their entire life in a self-absorbed fantasy um, if, uh, if they want to. There's nothing objectively wrong with that. Uh, but this movie treats that scenario as a tragedy. It clearly presents that kind of path as one that is a sad one, um, upholding the value of even a dark present reality that is endured over a pleasurable false fantasy life. Um, so anyway, some interesting things to think about, a really enjoyable experience for me. I have no idea what your tastes are in movies, but if I were a time traveler, holy crap, I would go back in time and say, Peter, oh my gosh, go, 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 what are, you, what are you doing? Go see it now. You should have just stopped this video at the beginning and gone to see this movie. This is easily your favorite movie of 2018. It is unlikely to be dethroned for the rest of the year. In fact, you will likely now consider Upgrade to be one of your favorite movies of all time. See it, buy it, show it to others, Peter. You're in for a treat. All right, it's rated R for strong violence, grisly images, and language. Those are all my thoughts. I'd love to get yours in the comments below. And then, of course, I hope you join us over at ChristianGeekCentral.com as we continue to geek out and seek the truth. Let's begin. Burn, ungodly filth. What do you want? To make you powerless or to make you despair? Spirit Blade Productions presents... Do you have any idea how much I will make you suffer? The horrific agony that I will inflict. Spirit Blade. Dark Ritual. Hell will be a refuge for you when I'm finished. For more information, visit spiritblade.com.